I think there are principally three uh, catalysts. Uh, one is that um, the world economy uh, has um, turned into an economy where there is a disassembly and assembly of component parts so that there's been a burgeoning of what's called network trade. Uh, and that has allowed uh, emerging markets to engage in world trade and multinational corporations to move their operations from advanced countries to emerging markets. Secondly, um, there has been an increase in South-South trade, that is to say trade and, and, and investment as well, between developing countries. Uh, in fact, South-South uh, uh, trade between uh, developing countries grew at about 10 percent between 1990 and 2001, which is twice the rate of trade between developed economies uh, and the whole world trading system. Um, and at this moment, um, South-South trade accounts for about 16 percent of world trade, whereas in 1990 it counted for about 8 percent of world trade. I think the third thing is the emergence of three uh, emerging market economies, Brazil, uh, China and India, and those have really altered the world landscape in economic terms. They have to be quite uh, tailored in their approach, depending on the country in question, not just the region in question. They have to, I think, employ um, different types of lenses and different types of techniques in terms of carrying out due diligence, looking at who are the partners uh, in, in joint ventures, figuring out the different types of ways of entering markets, looking at uh, ex ante whether or not you can exit the market when you want to exit the market. Um, the, the press uh, in many of these markets is quite nascent. The market institutions, the legal structures are quite nascent. So, you know, handling and carrying out risk mitigation um, in these markets is of a very different ilk uh, than it has been in the past in advanced country markets. And so it really takes, I think, uh, a different mindset uh, to, to deal with these risks. Certainly the most effective is to have independent, verifiable sources uh, to carry out this due diligence because oftentimes uh, companies will rely simply on people in the local economies or the local markets to say, well, can you check out company X that we want to engage in a joint venture in? And often the problem is, is that the party that you're asking this information from itself may not be terribly reputable. So the key, therefore, is to make sure that the person who is carrying out this due diligence for you, that he or she or the firm itself is quite reputable. Uh, and I think there are not a lot of places, frankly, in the world that provide world-class due diligence. And I think that comes from carrying out due diligence in many parts of the world and knowing that when you go into a new market, you say, ah, I, I've seen this problem before elsewhere. Because in, while obviously different countries have different characteristics, at a reduced form level, there are some very fundamental similarities across markets. And I think it takes an expert who has worked in many of these different regions of the world to recognize those, those fundamentals. Colombia and Latin America or, or a country like Botswana and Africa have certainly improved uh, their governance regimes and uh, have uh, attracted a fair amount of foreign direct investment um, uh, as a result, or Mozambique uh, in Africa. Uh, these are countries that people might not otherwise think would be attractive places for foreign direct investment. Um, in the case of Russia, uh, another country where I have worked extensively, uh, after the economic crisis in 1998 there, um, many companies uh, of, the, of the large companies realized that the way to go forward to 
uh, encourage foreign direct investment and to get investment into their own firm, more equity, was to subscribe to the OEC corporate governance guidelines. And so for a time, uh, these companies improved their corporate governance and were able to attract capital. Unfortunately, on the negative side, years later, when there was less pressure on these companies to abide by those kinds of standards, in fact, you saw, and today you see, that foreign investors are quite skittish about Russia. So you can really see that when uh, companies or governments abide by strong governance principles, investors react positively. When there are weaknesses in governance regimes, you see that FDI flows out or just doesn't come in. The notion that I've been discussing about the rise of South-South of commerce uh, is something that is, has, obviously has been accelerating, as I've noted. And I think the fact of the matter is that very few corporations, multinationals, from the advanced countries, from the North, really appreciate, A, that this trend is accelerating, and B, understand what that means in terms of changing their business strategies in order to compete effectively in a global economy where you have state-of-the-art, world-class multinationals out of Brazil, out of India, uh, out of China, competing not just, frankly, in the South, but now beginning to tread upon their own home territories in the North. And if one rolls the camera forward five, ten years from now, I think this is a trend that will continue. And I think for firms to uh, continue to be competitive, they have to understand this trend. They have to be prepared to deal with the risks associated with this trend.